Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I was do in Nashville, Tennessee, and welcome to our second episode of The Map Gift by Vetches, created for Andy Buchanan. I have reinforced my house a little bit here, and I was planning on exploring Castle Creek this episode. However, I found upon my diligent lighting of this house a little interesting thing right here. It seems that there's a pressure plate and a sign that says, don't be afraid to dream. Now, I've seen the movie Space Jam, so I know how important it is to, you know, stick it to the man and take it to the jam at the Space Jam. And I'm not afraid to dream. And wow, it's dark here. Oh, I was looking into the void. Other stuff has loaded. Excellent. That was a little bit foolish of me. We seem to be at the foot of the stone house, which is not only the name of the material used to construct it, but also the name of the estate proper. And that's a blaze spawner right there. Those of you who are new to Minecraft, this is a device that will make those things happen. We need to destroy that device with a pick without dying from the guys shooting at us. And I currently don't yet have any bow and arrow. I have some arrows that I scavenged earlier, but you know what? Those look like spider webs over there. Okay, so having constructed a bow and arrow, now we just need to get our, make our way into the house and explore. Seems like there's some coal kind of just lying around here. Oh, that was a little weird. Odd, it seems like the uh, trap doors are updating each time that I remove one of the blocks of coal. I wonder if there's blaze spawners in other parts... Uh-oh, of the house. Where... Uh-oh, so there's one of those guys. Now, what we're looking for, you gotta remember, is one of them fleecy boxes. Okay, spawner up there. Try and remove that. The best way to make the house safe is to just remove all of these as we encounter them. And then from there, essentially, explore and try and find the fleecy box. So, this is kind of like being the Ghostbusters. Because we go in and we find the nature of the paranormal disturbance. Then, after isolating it with our proton picks, we... Okay, well, let's see if there's anything out here. Bunch of endermen. Now, if I look at endermen, they will attack me. But if I don't look at them, they will not. Seems to be some sort of box down there. Bunch of coal here. Nothing of immediate interest, though. Gotta keep not looking at the endermen. Anyway, so we use our proton picks to defeat the ghosts, or blazes, or whatever, and then we get paid. And we get paid in wool, because that is the currency of this realm, and that's what we need to find to complete our gift monument. So, boom, another spawner destroyed. What's in this room? I keep hearing blazes phasing, which is a horrible, horribly difficult thing to say competently, blazes phasing. But let's see what we got here. Another spawner. Oh, almost looked at that Enderman. Hey, there's a chest here. Let's see if we can find out. Oh, this is the box from the book that uh, Daisy, uh, when she is in her dream, she finds her friend's diary. Now, the dream world in the book actually takes place like a few hundred years ago, or similarly to a few hundred years ago, for those of you who would like to interpret the use of my word lack there as to mean in a similar manner too, rather than to read into it as a verbal filler. So it looks like we've cleared the top floor, and other than finding that diary, which is important in the actual story gift, but which has no actual help or assistance to us in the game world of gift, because in Minecraft you can't really read books, which is arguably the worst thing about Minecraft, that there's no literacy. Or literacy campaigns! Okay, so what we are going to do is try and get away from that fella. I do want to find out what's in that box down there. Oh, hey, first off, let's destroy this before more blazes show up. So, a lot of times, bitches will put treasure in a box like this. What does this say? Power Miner 1000. Oh, that's exciting. It seems to be a magically enchanted pick, but we need to get out of here before we are on fire and or dead. Let's take a look at that pick, though. Efficiency 10 and Unbreaking 3. Now, what does that mean in practical terms? That means that we can essentially have all the coal we want as quickly as we want. So, lighting up this map will never be a hazard or a concern. Wow, this is kind of creepier with the additional torches, though, like all the purple. I kind of liked it more when it was all desaturated, but anyway. 
So let's just try and get some coal, get out of here without looking at any Enderman. Now, I'm not sure how to exit the end exactly. I know that sometimes there can be portals and stuff. In the real game, that's how you get out, is like after you beat the Ender Dragon, there would be a portal, which... Huh. Well, the only building that we haven't explored... Whoa, that might have been a problem. Did I look at that guy? No, okay, good. I thought I'd moused over him. That would have been... Eminently problematic. Whoa, creepers! And fire! What? And silverfish! Okay, okay, this is bad. This is bad. Okay, so keeping that super special pick out is asking for trouble when it comes to the silverfish. Let's just hide behind here and... Whoops. Did I get him? I might not be hitting him. Dang it. Oh, no. I have very few arrows, so... I'd better land some of these at least. There he is. Oh, good. More Endermen have spawned. Well, being as this area seems to be full of creepers, um... We could probably safely assume that there is a chest of some sort containing wool for our victory monument here. Now, Vetches likes to guard whatever is the most excellent part of the map with the most horrible things. So, now one thing that we can do to deter spawning is to add light. So we are just going to add some light around here uh, next to these windows. So that'll make it harder for creatures to spawn inside of there. And we just need to not look at these Endermen. Uh, they are everywhere. Endermen hit for a lot of damage. And there's a creeper over there, so that's going to be a problem for us. Weaving through the Endermen. Got to be like one of them airbenders or whatever from that Avatar series. Uh-oh, Blaze is spawning. Huh, so okay, this actually is jumping the portal in a, to escape. So that actually is our way out. If we need one. I'm also curious if these are silverfish blocks here. Yeah, they are. Dang it, bitches. Uh-oh, two of these guys. We got some double trouble. Now we got some single trouble. Which is... Uh-oh, heard a blaze. Can I get up here and see the fleecy box? Yeah. Okay, so there's definitely a fleecy box in there, but my avenue for approaching it is going to be along here. So let's just grab some of this gravel, and... Whoa! That was almost a lot worse. We better eat some food so we can regenerate health. Okay, so... Dang it! Okay, so in terms of good plans, that was not one of them. That thing has already imminently caused me some trouble. Whoa! Okay, so we are getting closer. Whoa, don't want to be stuck in a pit with these guys. They will not do me any good. Okay, so it looks like I might be able to come in from the bottom there if I can just kill this creeper first. There we are. One less creeper to worry about. More blazes to worry about, however. This is one of them trade-offs that we love to hear about so much in economics. Gray wool. Excellent. So I'm guessing that this is the schoolhouse from the book based on my brief glance into the window, and I'm trying to talk calmly about the novel to reassure myself that I will, in fact, survive the journey home. So, let's see. It cost me five hearts to jump through the first portal. Press escape to skip the cutscene. Leave in the end. Whoa, did it refill my health when I came through there? I'll take it. Based on my conversations with Vitches and Andy, apparently the Coronada overworld is primarily a traditional Minecraft resource hunt where you have to, you know, not starve. The dream world that we just saw is slightly difficult, and the underworld is essentially the horrible, horrible, difficult end game. And so, so far in the first two videos, we've gotten a taste for each Coronada and the Dream World Stone House. Done. Spooky voices. But 
I'm going to have to actually explore some and try and find the entrance to the underworld, which I'm assuming is somewhere throughout all of Coronada. I know that Vich has like a train line up there and that there's a whole bunch more to explore up here in the overworld. Although, having seen a little bit of the action in the dream world, I've got to get a little bit better equipment before I go blazing into, you know, the fires of the underworld. So, anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.